Hi, welcome to RC Kicks. On today's show, we'll be just chewing the RC fat again. I did a video on 10 reasons why people hate Tamiya and you guys and girls loved it. It was probably my biggest video in quite a while. So I thought now would be a good time because a lot of people contact me and give me feedback of why they hate Tamiya. But one aspect of it they don't really understand is why people love Tamiya. You know, they look at it and they go, well, what's so special about it? Why are people so crazy about these kits? So in this video, it's 10 reasons why people love Tamiya and why that actually is. Because I know there's a lot of people out there that just don't understand it. So we kick off with number one, and that is the nostalgia aspect. And I think this is a big key part of it for people who don't see the, the real value of Tamiya, that they don't have any nostalgic connection to the kits that Tamiya brought out in the 80s and 90s. So if you're like me, I am now uh, born 74. So if you're born in the 1970s to 1980s, then now you're looking you're around 40 to 45 to 55 range. So you've all grown up and you remember the kits that Tamiya brought out and you had some. So it's very nostalgic to look back and be able to now get some of the kits that you could never afford when you were younger. Um, so there's a massive aspect of that, I think, the nostalgia. And obviously Tamiya have risen to the occasion, now bringing out all these re re that we can now enjoy and get back into again because we have more freely available money, whereas when you're younger, getting an Avanti was almost an impossibility. So nostalgia does play a massive part in that. So if you don't have that connection, I think that is a big bit that's missing of why you just can't understand why people love Tamiya kits. Number two is the box art. That is a big part of it. When you look at the box art of Tamiya kits, those drawn ones, they are stunning. Best in field, and I don't think they've ever really been beaten. The amount of time and effort they put in to actually drawing those uh, box art was well worth it. On the surface of it and in modern days today, it's something you probably would never see. But back in the day, it was well worth them doing. And the artistry that's used and how hard it is to draw them up like that. But I remember going into Beatties in the UK and seeing these beautiful boxes with stunning artwork and it was a massive draw. So it was well worth them doing it. I'd love to know whether when they were thinking about doing that, it was something they, they decided to do straight away or was it something that was brought up as an idea but the cost implications of doing it was put off but it definitely turned out to be well worth doing and we still see it today not quite as much sometimes you get more photographs purely because of just how much it would cost to do each box but not only is it just the box side of it they even pushed it down to things like motors um, peripheral tires, you've got beautiful boxes and batteries when you bought a battery, the experience. It, you know, if you look back to what kind of Apple's done with their boxing and packaging, Tamiya were right on it with theirs. When you used to buy a set of tires or you bought a battery, I mean, even today, when you look at something that they sell today, you still get beautiful presentation, you know, as a brushless motor, that is absolutely stunning. Yes, you could argue it's really expensive, but you can see that they still are proud to produce good quality packaging. Now that is a big part of being Japanese, so it's, it's well appreciated. And I know a lot of you love when the kits come out and they put a little bit extra and raise up the quality of the packaging. Number three and another massive one is that Tamiya made a lot of character cars. This is something I've touched on uh, previously and cars that have their own identity, their own way of looking. They're not the same as everybody else. They're very different. They stand alone and also the amount of range that they had. You know, you look at, I'm looking at some over here, the Hot Shots, the Avantis, the Thunder Shots, the Thunder Dragon, you know, all these radically different looking cars and buggies that, that all kind of drew you to them and the naming they really understood how to name things there is no <laughs> there is no 147682 it was thunder dragon and then the artwork to go with it it was thunder shot it was it was 
big names that that matched him with the character which grabbed the imagination of the younger people and i think even today that still holds true of why we have the favorites that we do number four was the manuals tamia really understood good quality manuals made massive difference to the building experience now if you go all the way back some of the manuals you used to get in some of the rc cars were terrible absolutely shocking they were tons of text and hardly any pictures or a couple of scratchy little drawings or the manual was just full of text but it was in a different language so the building experience was a lot more guesswork and it was a lot more challenging where Tamiya went purely for a visual manual that lasted the test of time. The manuals you see today and the manuals you see back in the day are almost identical. So they got it right all the way back in the 70s and 80s. So the manuals really helped the experience when it comes to building it. Number five, and I think this is a big key aspect of it, was just the range that Tamiya had available. If you were a Formula One fan, there was RC for you. If you were a rally fan, there were rally cars galore for you. If you loved buggies, there were tons of buggies, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive buggies available. There was realistic buggies. There was futuristic looking buggies. There was tons of options available. Monster trucks. If you loved your monster trucks, again, a whole other genre available to you, all from Tamiya. All characters with fantastic names. Also, having such a range of cars available the price points varied massively and things like the grasshopper the hornet these were like the entry level kits that people could get into when budgets were really limiting speaking for myself i got a grasshopper if they didn't have that range it would be so much more difficult to get into more of the high-end kits Number six was the fit and finish. Not only was the manual beautiful and easy to work with, the actual parts went together really well. The attention to detail for the fit and finish of the kits made building it a fun experience, not a frustratingly challenging, difficult one, but an absolute enjoyment to build. And also as you're enjoying putting it together, it actually connected you to your car, made it feel more yours. So that was something else that other kits kits back in the day didn't go together quite as well so definitely fit and finish really helped Hamia. Number seven was the marketing videos. Now this, maybe I'm only talking about the UK, but back in the day you could go into BT's and you'd go upstairs and there'd be a little TV, a CRT TV, playing the fantastic videos for all the Tamiya kits. Highly sophisticated mechanics provide the ultimate in all terrain performance for this radio control rally racer from Tamiya. This is the car that will set new standards in radio control enjoyment. Under this blow-molded polycarbonate body with all that amazing detail is a monocoque chassis made from light but sturdy engineering plastic. Thinking back to the, the, the quality of the videos, considering, you know, what we produce now with small cameras, back then they didn't have that. But the quality of production was still very high. Seeing them zooming across the beaches and how they attach cameras to the actual cars, being that cameras were a lot bigger back then. But the production value of the marketing videos was excellent and the very iconic voice that overlaid them all so you'd go into beaties and you would look at all these beautiful boxes because of all the artwork and then you would stand right next to the little screen on a vhs tape quality wasn't that great from an image point of view and you would watch them roll around until you were told to get a move on as your parents had moved on to a new shop so that was a big part of it from the marketing aspect number eight kind of touched on this previously was the whole build experience having to build up the car and then obviously having the manual like i've talked about fit and finish but the overall experience of building it whether you built it on your own if you're a little bit older or whether you had your father or whoever to help you build it really gave you that attachment that it was your car cutting out painting the body and granted there was a lot of terrible bodies being painted up and cut out but it didn't matter because it was yours and you did it yourself um, as well as for me i don't know if this is the same for a lot of people but my father used to tinker with cars and play with cars and work on cars so being able to mirror that in your own little car was a massive connection to it and i think it was of its time 
Now today, ready to runs are much more popular and people don't really have the time to invest in it. They just want to take it out of the box and drive it and move on. Whereas back in these sort of 70s and 80s, modeling was much more of a thing that people would uh, invest in something to get something down the line where now it's much more quick, 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 quick. And people expect their attention spans are a lot less now than they were thanks to things like the internet and stuff like that. So it was a part of the experience. Building a car is part of the experience of making it yours as well as it's a much better way of going because if something breaks, you've obviously built it, you can fix it, you understand it more instead of just getting something and then running it. Even I have that today, I'll, be, I'll get a running vehicle given to me for review and then I'll break something and then I have to like dismantle it to the fix it. And because I'm only dismantling it for the first time, I didn't build it up. It's a lot harder to relate to it and try and figure out what's going on. Number nine, all your friends were getting them. This was something that was really, really big as well as it was, it wasn't just a few people getting these RCs. It was mainstream popular at the day. So lots of people would go and get them and then you'd be out running them in the street with your friends and one, your friends would have one and another friend would have one and you'd be out zooming up and down the road with them. So there was that whole aspect of everybody being involved and it was the, it was one of the toys of its time. Number 10, and I think it stands true today as much as it did back then, the bodies. Tamiya produce, in my opinion, the best detailed polycarbonate and hard bodies available. They are above and beyond most other manufacturers. If you love your rally cars or your road cars, getting a body set from Tamiya, the scale, they've always been fantastic at getting the proper scale. Nothing looks wrong. It's exactly as it should be. And the detail level that you get is beautiful. Absolutely stunning. As well as the decals you get, the quality of the decals and, you know, having to cut them all out and stick them all on. But what you end up with is almost model-like. And you can see why they're so good at it, being that Tamiya produces a lot of models. And that's skill set has migrated across to Tamiya's benefit and you can't beat it and that today is one of my biggest draws while I'll happily take a body from one uh, kit and put it onto a different kit purely because the body set is that good and chasing down original body sets is definitely better than trying to find aftermarket ones because the detail level and the production quality is second to none. So there you go. That's my 10 reasons. Comment below what yours are. Thanks so much. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.